So there has been lots of protests and riots going on across the US for the past 10 days, ever since May 26. Now I'm sure most people already know what's going on and why is it by now. And many investors seem to worry about how it would affect the stock market during the early days of the protests. But during the past one week or so, the stock market didn't seem to be affected by it at all. In fact, the stock market ran it again and again, day after day. So in this video, I want to share some thoughts on why there's a disconnect between the social unrest and the stock market. So make sure to stay till the very end of this video to avoid missing any information. And if this is your first time watching a video from this channel, then please consider subscribing as I go through weekly topics ranging from personal finance, investments, and well-being. But before I continue with this video, I just want to clarify my stance towards Black Lives Matter, that I completely stand by anti-racism. And I really hope that one day, that nobody has to fight for racial equality ever again. So back to this video. Now, if you are into stock trading and investing, then you should be familiarized with this common saying, that the stock market is not the economy. They do share some common path every now and then, but more often than you realize, they do move independently from each other. The economy is a representation of how well companies are doing in a country, or how low the unemployment rate is, and also some other geopolitical relations. But these are mostly factual and not speculations. On the other hand, the stock market is heavily relying on speculations and investors' confidence in the future. It is forward-looking. As far as confidence goes, investors are not too worried about all these protests and riots that are happening right now, as they happen quite a lot in the US. And that is quite concerning to know actually. But anyway, what investors are seeing in the country right now are businesses opening up, lockdown is coming to an end from city to city, and reports from various sectors are also suggesting that the worst is behind us. The stock market really started to react positively ever since the long weekend in late May, that people are enjoying being out, driving around, and finally enjoying life once again, and that really made people feel very optimistic. If we look at the three indexes, the S&P, Dow Jones, and Nasdaq, all spike up immediately after the long weekend on May 26. Around that time, multiple levels of governments have also announced plans to reopen the economy. So ever since then, people and investors are feeling positive that things are finally returning back to normal. These confidence and excitements are being extended to even until today, two weeks after that long weekend, and it will be so for the near future. The stock market is also heavily biased. The five biggest companies in the US, Apple, Google, Amazon, Microsoft, and Facebook, account for roughly 20% of the S&P 500 and 45% of Nasdaq. And these stocks have been rallying aggressively since the economy hitting rock bottom in mid-March. So it is fair to say that the economy is being eclipsed by these five companies, and it may give people the false sense of reality. And speaking of reality, many banks have also released their quarterly financial statements during this period. And as expected, they all did not do that well, but they did not do as bad as expected. Hence, this sign of relief also helped driving up the stock market. Then, a few days later, many government agencies also suggested that the worst is finally behind them, and people like hearing that. And the best one came in just today on Friday, the June 5th, that the unemployment rate is finally falling, and of course, the stock market went crazy. So you see, news after news, as long as they're not too terrible, investors are okay with it. Even the airline stocks are ramping up, so what gives? Boeing is still not off the hook yet from its 737 MAX issues, and many airlines are still facing huge financial problems as we speak. People know that, and these are not speculations. But people choose to ignore them, because they are optimistic with the general direction the economy is heading. But let's take a look from a different perspective. Now, I don't think it's hard to imagine that if the protests go on for a long time, then the retail sector will be compromised. But don't forget that the retail sector is already compromised by the lockdown, way before the protests. The downward effect has already been accounted for months earlier, so there's no need to reaccount it again. Similarly to all the slightly negative financial reportings, that all the negative outcomes have already been accounted for. And that reinforces the notion that the stock market is forward-looking. The investment today is a reflection of the confidence in the performance in the future. The negative financial outcome of today's companies were already reflected on the stock prices months earlier when the stock market crashed. But what worries many economists are the huge liabilities and issues many big companies are going to face, 
These are not speculations, by the way. Yet, the stock market is not reflecting it today. In fact, many companies have already issued more common shares just to raise capital to increase their liquidity, or borrowing more money for that matter. All this will eventually come back to haunt them, but investors don't seem to care what's going to happen at the moment, which many experts already knew coming. So as you can see, investors are being overly optimistic right now. They're not investing for the future at the moment, but taking advantage of the volatile market. With so many reasons and underlying optimism, I'm afraid that the protests will not cause much damage to the stock market for the time being. Unless they turn it into a year-long protest like seen in Hong Kong, which also took a while to be reflected in the stock market. Otherwise, the US stock market is safe for now from the protests. Alright, if you find this episode helpful, please feel free to like this video and subscribe to this channel for more related videos in the future. And as always, thank you so much for watching and peace out.